Now, in our last lecture, we have derived the expression for the error of interpolation in Lagrange interpolation. Uh, let us just uh, revise what we have done last time. We have derived the error of interpolation. <coughs> now, we have denoted this as E n, n to denote the order of the polynomial that we are taking this we have defined it as f x minus p x and we have derived that this expression is w x divided by x minus uh, w x by factorial n plus 1 f n plus 1 xi where w x is the product of all the factors in the given problem x minus x naught, x minus x 1 and so on x minus x n. We can also find the bound for the error of interpolation. So, I can just take the magnitude and maximize the right hand side. Therefore, I will have less than or equal to 1 upon n plus 1. The maximum of this I will write it as m n plus 1 and then I will write down the maximum of in the given interval a b of w x, where we have denoted m n plus 1 is maximum of the n plus 1th derivative in the interval a to b. Yes. Now, from here we have derived the expressions for the linear and quadratic interpolations which we would like to use it in an example. Uh, let us just write down what is the error in linear interpolation. Now, here we are using only two points out in the data that is x 0 f 0 and x 1 f 1. So, these are the two points of the data that we are using these are any two arbitrary adjacent points in the entire data. Then we have proved that error of the linear polynomial is less than or equal to h square by 8 m 2 and h is the distance between x 1 and x 0 x is equal to h is equal to x 1 minus x 0. Now, this formula would be the same whether we have got the data with equispaced points or this data is not equispaced because we are taking only two consecutive data points therefore, the distance is h we are calling it therefore, the formula will hold in both the cases. Now, in error in quadratic interpolation we are now approximating by a polynomial of degree 2 in other words we are using therefore, th three arbitrary adjacent points in the entire data as this. We are the using the three consecutive data points in the entire data that is given and using these three we are now writing the formula and then writing the error in interpolation and this we have proved it as less than or equal to 1 upon 6 and uh, let us call it as m 3 maximum of in the given interval that is x naught x 2 is the given interval of magnitude of x minus x naught x minus x 1 x minus x 2, where m 3 is the maximum of in the interval x naught to x 2 of f triple dash of x. We have also proved that in the if the data is equispaced in the quadratic interpolation, equispaced data, then we have proved that error in this case is bounded by h cubed by 9 root 3 m 3. Now, I would like to use the results that we have 
derived here to find the error of interpolation in two examples which we have done last time. Let us just uh, revise one example, uh, let me just show the example we have done last time. We said construct the linear polynomial which fits this data, predict the value at 1.5. So, uh, now I want to find out what will be the error of interpolation in this example and what will be the error at this point. If I want the error at any particular point, I can just let us suppose you have been given data values between say 1 and 10 and I want the error at a particular point, I can just substitute that value of x over here. If suppose I want at 1.5, I will substitute x at 1.5 over here and then simply find out the what are the, uh, the right hand side and then write down the bound. If I want the largest possible value to be written on the right hand side, I will maximize it and then find out what is the largest value, so that I have got the required upper bound here. So, let us take this as an example, uh, let us write it as uh, call it as example 3. Uh, in examples 1 and 2, one and two find the bound on the error. Find the bounds on the errors and errors. Now I will first take this example, this uh, example 1, so let us put it as 1. Uh, that uh, in example 1, we are talking about the linear interpolating polynomial. Therefore, we have to find out what is the value of magnitude of E 1 is less than or equal to h square by 8 m 2. Here we have at x naught is equal to 1 x 1 is equal to 2, x naught is 1, x 1 is 2, therefore, h is equal to x 1 minus x naught that is equal to 1. Therefore, this is simply equal to 1 upon 8 m 2. Now, we will see later on how we may be able to get an approximate value for second derivative, we do not know as yet, but we will if the function is given to us, we can do it, otherwise we will have some other alternatives which we will discuss it later on. So, this is the bound on the error 1 by 8 of m 2 in this example. Now, if I take the other example that we have done last time that the fit and interpolating polynomial for this data, we have given 3 data points and then ask us to find the what is the error in this particular this one. So, this is 3 points therefore, we have fitted there a quadratic polynomial for this data. Now, for this data I would write down that error this is less than or equal to <coughs> Now, notice that the, the data is not equispaced, we have the points as x 0 is 1, x 1 is equal to 2 and x 2 is equal to 4. So, they are not equispaced, therefore, I will have to use the, the full formula that we have written, uh, written here and that is 1 by 6 m 3 of maximum of x minus x naught x minus x 1, x minus 4. So, I will write it again, uh, this is I want the maximum of line between 1 and 4, x 0 is 1, x 2 is 4. So, I need the maximum of this lying in the interval 1 to 4 of the quantity x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 4. Now, we know this, this This is a one variable problem, therefore, if I set this quantity as g x, then I can just open it up, multiply it out, this is x square minus 3 x plus 2 and multiply by x minus 4, I will get here x cubed minus 7 x squared plus 14 x minus 8, I have just multiplied these 3. Now, I want to find the maximum minimum of this absolute value. So, I will just differentiate this in one variable g dash x 3 x squared minus 14 x plus 14 and set it equal to 0. Now, this will give me two values for x and any one of these values can give us the maximum. So, I will find out the values of x from here 
that is minus 14 by 196 this is <coughs> that is equal to 28 by 2 a. So, this gives me 3.2153 and 1.4514. These are the two values of x. Out of these two values, one of them will be the largest value, the other will be the smaller value. So, let us substitute it. What I will get therefore, will be I need the maximum of we need the maximum of substitute this 3 minus 2.13 that will give you uh, let us write down one uh, value this is 2.2153 that is x minus 1 x minus 2 1 1.2153 x minus 4 that is equal to 0 0.7847 that is the x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 x minus 4 and this is one value the other value the maximum of the two values I am writing I will substitute this therefore, this will become x minus 1. So, that is 0 0.4514 x minus 2 therefore, this will have 5486 <coughs> I am taking x minus 2 and then I am taking this with a negative sign well, let us put it here and x minus 4 <coughs> that is will give you minus 2.5486. Obviously, this is larger of the two and this is actually maximum of <coughs> uh, this is equal to 2.1126 and this is 6311. So, that the maximum is 1126. <coughs> now, remember we no, do not need to find the second derivative to find out maxima or minima. We are not really talking of maxima minima of g x, we are talking of the maximum of the absolute value. Therefore, it would be sufficient for you to just find the first derivative, find the values of x that will be there, substitute it in the given expression and find the largest of all of them. It is possible the smaller value here would give you I mean which it may be showing that it will be minimum may be giving actually maximum maximum because we are talking of absolute when once you are talking of a large negative value the absolute will be the positive sign therefore, that may give you this therefore, it is not necessary that you should go for the second derivative and do anything. Now, therefore, when once we found out this maximum value I will put it over here and say that this is less than or equal to 2.1126 by 6 into m 3 now I should I put here m 3 yes. Again, <coughs> I need the approximate value for m 3 which we shall see later on how we can determine them. Now, let us take an application of this. So, let us call this example 4. So, what I would say here I would like to construct a table of values a function is given a table of values for f x is equal to cos x. I am taking a simple example in 0 pi by 4 with equally spaced step size is to be constructed. Is to be constructed. Find the maximum size step size. find the maximum step size that can be used if the error if the error in we will take two problems here error in linear interpolation
is to be less than 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 quadratic interpolation <coughs> is to be less than 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Now, what we are really asking here is that we have a known function, I want to construct a table of values for it such that the I want to I may use linear interpolation in that as a second problem we may use a quadratic interpolation, but the error of inter interpolation should be bounded by this quantity. Then find tell us what is the largest step size that you can use for constructing this data values. This is a problem that we are looking at it in the reverse way as what we have earlier we have given a data there we have constructed the polynomial and the error. Now, we want to construct a, a data using a given function. Now, for this let us straight away write down what is the error in our linear interpolation. Error in linear interpolation is bounded by h square by 8 m 2 h square by 8 m 2. Now, m 2 is maximum of we are given the interval 0 to pi by 4. So, the interval 0 to pi by 4 of f double dash of x. Now, the function given to us is f x is equal to cos of x. Therefore, this is maximum of in the interval 0 to pi by 4 of magnitude of cos x. Now, we differentiate it two times. So, minus <coughs> sin x then cos x we will have simply magnitude of cos x. Now, the largest value is uh, occurs at 0 cos 0 is 1 cos pi by 4 1 by root 2. So, it is a dis uh, it is a decreasing function. So, we will have the value maximum value as 1. Now, I want this error to be less than h square by 8 into 1, but this error should be bounded by 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 that is linear interpolation should be total error ma largest possible error should be less than 10 minus. Therefore, I can write down h square is less than 40 into 10 to the power of minus 6 or just h is less than root 40 into 10 to the power of minus 3. Uh, this is equal to 6.3 uh, 3 to 4 5 10 to the power of minus 3. So, that this is 0 0 6 3 5. Therefore, I need to choose a step length smaller than 0 0.0063 in order that the maximum error would be less than 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Now, let us take the case of quadratic interpolation. The in the case of quadratic interpolation, we have error e2 is less than or equal to. Now, we have been given a simple example here, we have been asked to do it in equally spaced step size. So, the step length is equal. Therefore, we shall use the formula which we have derived h cubed by 9 root 3 m 3, where m 3 is the maximum on the interval 0 to pi by 4 magnitude of third derivative of x, third derivative with respect to x of f x. So, this is maximum of 0 to pi by 4, uh, third derivative will be sin x. So, we will return it as sin x, whereas the maximum of this is 1 upon root 2, sin 0 is 0, it is an increasing function. So, we will have 1 upon root 2. Therefore, I have h cubed upon 9 root 3 into 1 upon root 2 and this should be less than 5 into 10 to the power of minus 6, which I can write h cubed is less than this is 45 root 6 into 10 to the power of minus 6 and h comes out to be uh, let me take it h comes out to be 0 
zero four seven nine four seven. So, cube root we are taking of this and then we can get the value of this one. Therefore, I need to use the step length which is smaller than 0 0.047947. Now, you can see that the quadratic inter interpolation has improved tremendously over linear interpolation because in the when we have used the linear interpolation we were requiring that the step length should be smaller than 0 0.0663 whereas, we are saying here it is sufficient to have a step length smaller than 0 0.048 which is approximately 8 times the step length that we can use in linear interpolation than in this one. So, if you are going from 0 to pi by 4 actually the number of points that you would come you can easily get it that will be total length that is pi by 4 minus 0 divided by h that will give you the total number of points. If you are saying the number of points in the data uh, table it will be pi by 4 minus 0 divided by this whereas, in this case pi by 4 minus 0 divided by 0 4 7. Therefore, the number of points that you require in the table which will be much less in quadratic interpolation than linear interpolation. Now, we have derived the Lagrange interpolation and shown its application over here and it is the among the all the interpolating polynomials Lagrange is the fundamental of all the results. However, computationally it is not very efficient. Why it is not computationally efficient is there are two reasons of this one reason we can let us say the uh, let us call it as disadvantage. Let us call it as disadvantage of Lagrange interpolation. <coughs> For obtaining the Lagrange interpolating polynomial we need to find all the l i x and that is the expression w x upon x minus x i into w dash x i. The data that is given let us suppose a 100 data points is given. If all the 100 data points are lying on a straight line it is representing polynomial of degree 1, but all these l i x are polynomials of degree 99. Therefore, I need to compute each one of them then combine them collect all the terms and then cancel off all the ones and in this example of 100 data points you will cancelling x to the power of 99, x to the power of 98 everything. So, you need to collect all these coefficients and then simplify it which is an extremely tedious computation. Therefore, one disadvantage is the is the tedious computations. The second disadvantage is that if I have a data given to me and if I add one more data item to this the form of L i x is going to change completely because it adds one more term. Therefore, all L i x have to be recomputed if we are adding one or more data items that means again it is a it is not a, a format in which one can use it easily. Therefore, the L i s ought to be computed are again to be computed if an additional point or I can let us say if one more point is added to the data. Now, we would like to construct a, a interpolating polynomial which is simple and which will take care of both of them that is one is it will not have that much tedious computations and secondly if you add one more data item we do not have to change anything except you add one more term to the given interpolating polynomial. To do that let us define what is known as divided differences. So, we would like to define what is known as divided differences. Now, what we have here is the data uh, let us write f f x x 0 f 0 x 1 f 1 x 2 f 2 x n f n. So, this is our data that is given to us. 
then I would like to define what is known as the first divided difference. First divided difference that I would have a, a notation uh, in square brackets I will put the two data points I am using the abscissa of the data points that I am using x naught x 1. This is the f at 1 minus f at 0 divided by x 1 minus x naught that is the distance of the ordinates divided by the distance of the abscissa that is why it is called divided difference. We are taking the difference of the ordinates divide it by the distance between the abscissa. So, this is f 1 minus f naught by x minus, minus x naught. Similarly, I can define this is a general point. So, if I take this as x i x i plus 1 this will be simply f i plus 1 minus f i by x i plus 1 minus x i we are still talking of the data which is random in which the it is not equally spaced it is randomly spaced. Therefore, this I can take i is equal to 0 1 so on n. Now, I will define the second divided difference. Now, before you write this one just leave some space let us write the table of divided differences let us call it as divided difference table. So, let us write down divided difference table just leave some space we will fill up for the second divided difference and so on, but let us just see what we have done how it goes. So, let us put these data points vertically like this x 1 f 1 x 2 f 2 x 3 f 3 x n f n. Now, I will put here first divided difference I will call it first divided difference. I am using these two values these two data points and construct my first divided difference as f 1 minus f naught by x 1 minus x naught. So, I would write here f 1 minus f naught divided by x 1 minus x naught that will be equal to f x 0 x 1. Now, by the same argument I will use this and construct my first divided difference with respect to, to x 1 and x 2 these are the two axis of points that I am using x 1 and x 2. Now, I will use these two and get f x 2 x 3. Now, the abscissa for these two is x 2 and x 3. So, this will be f 3 minus f 2 divided by the distance between the abscissas. So, here I will have f of x n minus 1 x n I will have. Therefore, the first column of this table will be all be the first divided differences for the entire table. Okay. Now, let us go back to what we wanted the second divided difference. Now, the second divided difference would be based on the values that we have computed already to construct a second column which we shall call as the second divided difference. So, what I would define here is the second divided difference will be f x naught x 1 x 2. So, I need to take one more abscissa point and that will be the, the next lower or lower order divide difference leaving the first argument I leave the first argument minus and then I leave the last argument f x naught x 1. Then the distance between the abscissa x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x naught. Therefore, if I generalize this now I would have this as f x i minus 2 f x i minus 1 f x i these are the three consecutive abscissa and that will be the 
I leave the first argument, I will have the divided difference with respect to these two abscissa, then I leave this last one, I would have f x i minus 2 x i minus 1 divided by x i minus x i minus 2. So, I would go from i is equal to 2, 3, so on n. i is n minus 2 n minus 1 n and this will be the second divided difference. Now, therefore, I can use this one and now construct my table of second divide difference. So, I would now make this a second divided difference. Now, the second divide difference table we can see the identically as we have formed the first divide difference is going to come. So, I need to take this di this divide difference minus this divided by the distance now, distance is now increasing x 2 minus x 0. So, this will be f of oh, I can now write like this and then write this here f x naught x 1 x 2. So, I am using the 3 abscissa x naught x 1 x 2 f this minus this divided by x 2 minus x naught. Now, if I use, use these two, then this will be x 1, x 2, x 3. Therefore, this will be second divide difference with x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on. I would get here f x n minus 2, x n minus 1, x n. Now, the second column is complete and these are all the second divided difference and then we can proceed on like this and then write down all the differences the nth divided difference the uh, there are only n plus 1 values here. Therefore, we can proceed up to nth divided difference and the last one will be the nth divided difference and that will be f x naught x 1 x 2 x n. we will have only n divided difference as I said because there are only n plus 1 values over here. Now, let us just uh, uh, have a again let us just go back to this slide and then see every divided difference first second or any every one can be written in terms of the ordinates f not f 1. I can open it up simplify and then collect all the terms and then write down explicitly as a linear combination of f not f 1 f 2. And if I do that let us just have a look at uh, one of them and then generalize it from there. For example, if I take f x naught x 1 this is equal to I will take f naught first f naught divided by x naught minus x 1 I will absorb the minus sign. So, that I will have write this as x naught minus x 1 plus f 1 upon x 1 minus x naught. <coughs> now, if I do this for the next divided difference and then collect all the terms, I would get f x naught x 1 x 2 is equal to f naught divided by x naught minus x 1 x naught minus x 2 plus f 1 x 1 minus x naught x 1 minus x 2 plus f 2 x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x 1. the denominator is a product of all the factors with the first te first term being whatever the abscissa belongs to this numerator f x x naught therefore, all the differences using x naught x naught minus x 1 x naught minus x 2 f at x 1. So, the denominator will be x 1 minus x naught x 1 minus x 2 this is f at x 2 therefore, the denominator will be x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x 1. Therefore, I will have f x naught x 1 
x n is equal to summation of n is 0 to n f of x i divided by all the products j is equal to n except of course, and I, I cannot be equal to j x i minus x j. As I said the numerator is f at x i the denominator will be all the products with the first term with the x i and all the remaining abscissas that are to be used except of course, i not equal to j. So, this is the general expression for the any divided difference to be written in terms of the ordinates. Okay. Now, let us take a, a, a simple example for this because that will be the base for our constructing the interpolating polynomial. Okay, I will I'll just write it again. Uh, construct the divide difference table. construct the divide difference table for the data x f x minus 2 15 minus 1 1 0 1 2 19 5 6 30. So, let us put this in the vertical format, so that I can write down all the differences minus 2 15 <coughs> minus 1 1 0 1 2 19 5 6 31. Now, this let us take these two this is 1 minus 15 1 minus 15 divided by minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 2 this is your x 1 minus x naught. So, this will give us minus 14. Now, let us take these two the numerator is 0 therefore, let us uh, keep it as 0 1 minus 1 is 0 this gives 19 minus 1 divide by 2 minus 0 2 minus 0 that is 18 by 2 that is equal to 9. Then 631 minus 19 divide by 5 minus 2 5 minus 2 that is equal to 612 that is equal to 204. 204. So, the first column of is complete. Now, let us take the second divide difference. So, if I take these two I will have 0 plus 14. Now, we have moved x naught x 1 x 2 therefore, 0 plus 2 0 plus 2 that is equal to 7. <laughs> then I take these two 9 minus 0 divided by now I have to choose the arguments x 1 x 2 x 3 that is 2 minus minus plus 1 that is equal to 3. Then I use this 2 0 4 minus 9 <coughs> by 5 minus 0. So, that is 39 39. Then we go to the third divide difference. <coughs> we will have this as 3 minus 7. Now, we have moved x naught x 1 x 2 x 3. So, this will be 2 plus 2 that will be 2 plus 2 that gives you minus 1. Then I am moving to x 1 to x 5 this 5 therefore, this will be 39 minus 3 5 minus 1 that is 5 plus 1 5 plus 1 36 by 6 that is equal to 6. And here the fourth 
divide difference is 6 plus 1 divided by the distance 5 plus 2 that is equal to 1. Now, interestingly if the if the data was not a polynomial full degree polynomial that means, this is a 5 points are there it will be a polynomial of degree 4 if you want to construct the Lagrange interpolation. If it is not a polynomial of degree 4, but it is less say 3 or 2 or 1. So, if all the points are lying in the straight line automatically the differences higher order difference will become 0 the higher order differences automatically would become 0 implying that the they are lying not lying on the full polynomial, but the polynomial of degree less than that one. We will see how we are going to express that one this will the this table itself would automatically tell us whether we are having a full degree polynomial or we are not having a full degree polynomial. Based on this let us construct the the new interpolation polynomial which we shall call it as Newton's divided difference interpolating polynomial. Now, we write the polynomial as when we have written the Lagrange interpolation we have taken linear combination of <coughs> f's and then we have written it as the Lagrange polynomial here we will not do that. What we do is we will write in a altogether different form p and x I will write this as some a naught x minus x naught into a 1 x minus x naught x minus x 1 a 2 so on x minus x naught x minus x 1 x minus x n minus 1 a n. There are various ways of writing a polynomial for example, you are writing a quadratic you can write down a plus b x plus c x squared or you can also write it as a constant into x minus alpha into x minus beta. You can also write it as in the in the in a form like a constant plus x minus x naught a 1 plus this. Now, if you look at this is a constant this is linear this is quadratic and this finally, is of the degree n there are n terms this is of degree n this is a polynomial of degree n this is a polynomial of degree n. There are various ways of writing a polynomial therefore, we have chosen a way of writing a given polynomial. Now, if this is the polynomial it should fit the data it should fit the data. What is the data? Data is p n at x x i must be equal to f at x i that is our data that is given to us as x i f i is given to us. So, if I substitute x i in this I should get by by x i let us do that let us put x naught here p n of x naught should be equal to f at x naught. When I put x naught all the terms vanish except a 0. So, this is a 0 a 0 is simply f at x naught. Now, let us p n at x 1 that is equal to f at x 1 a naught plus x 1 minus x naught into a 1. Now, the second term onwards all of them contain x 1 x minus x 1 is here x minus x 1 all the terms contain x minus x 1 therefore, all of them would vanish except these two terms. Now, a naught is already determined a naught is equal to f at x naught plus x min minus x naught into a 1. Now, let us bring f x naught to this side and solve for a 1 therefore, a 1 is equal to 
I will write now this as f 1 minus f naught by x 1 minus x naught, which turns out to be the first divided difference. This is equal to x naught x 1. Now, I repeat continue it like this, I now substitute x 2 in this polynomial. If I substitute x 2, then I will get a naught x 2 minus x naught a 1 plus x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x 1 into a 2. All the remaining terms contain x 2 minus x 2, so all of them would vanish except these three terms of which we have already computed a naught a 1 is also computed. This is equal to therefore, left hand side is f of x 2, right hand side is f 0 x 2 <coughs> minus x 0 a 1 is f 1 minus f 0 by x 1 minus x 0 and this is the second term. Therefore, I can find out a 2 from here bring everything to the left hand side. Therefore, a 2 is 1 upon x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x 1 that is the denominator over here. This is f 2 this is minus f 0 minus x 2 minus x 0 into f 1 minus f 0 by x 1 minus x 0. Now, I collect the coefficients of f 0, f 1, f 2, f 2 is alone here. So, the denominator f 2 is this, f 1 has got only one term. So, f 1 is also there, only f 0 is to be added. Let us put it reverse way, let us start with f 2. f 2 is x 2 minus x naught x 2 minus x 1. Let us take f 1, this is x 2 minus x 0, x 2 minus x 0 they cancel off. Uh, there is a minus sign here, let us absorb the minus sign here into this that is plus x 1 minus x 2. So, I will have here f 1, this is x 1 minus x naught which stays as it is and this term is x 1 minus x 2. I collect the third coefficient f naught and I would give the result for this, this will be simply x 0 minus x 1 x 0 minus x 2 and this turns out by definition our second divided difference, this is f x naught x 1 x 2. Now, I can use induction procedure and then show that by induction a n is f x naught x 1 so on f x n. Therefore, we have completed the derivation of the polynomial. Therefore, our polynomial is p n x is f x naught plus x minus x naught f x naught x 1. We are coming from the top of the table, this x 0, x 1, x 2 is from the top of the table, x minus x naught x minus x 1 f of x naught x 1 x 2 plus so on. We have a polynomial of degree n here, therefore, this is x minus x n minus 1 f x naught x 1 x n. This is called the Newton's divided difference interpolation polynomial. This is the Newton's divided difference interpolating polynomial.
we shall take up the application of this in the next lecture.